So we all have been there. We got this opportunity to contribute on an exciting project. We checked the readme to follow the guide to have the development set up ready. Hoping this one is still up to date. We do our best and the next thing we know is that we have a bunch of errors and it doesn't work. So we reach out to our teammates looking for help and we have this terrible response. But it works on but my machine. It works on my machine. Stop, 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 stop. There is a better way to smooth your development setup and make it ready in one click. I promise. You only need these three things to make any development setup ready in a click. First one would be Docker for desktop or Rancher for desktop. Docker for desktop is not anymore free for enterprise user, while Rancher for desktop is fully open source, so I'll be using this one. The second thing you need is VS Code. I'm sorry, if you are using another IDE, the magic won't happen. But you know what? I changed from IntelliJ to VS Code for that specific reason, so who knows? Stick around a bit longer and maybe you change your mind. And join the dark side. And last but not least, install the VS Code extension remote container and you are ready to go. Check out the links of the requirements in the description. Alrighty, let's get our hands dirty. So I'll be working here on a macOS M1 processor, but of course you can run it anywhere. Yes, anywhere. So let's start with a simple Python project. We will create an empty directory, cd in it, and open in VS Code. Now that's done, we can open the command palette with command shift P and pick remote container reopen in container. So what's this? Well, Microsoft has built multiple Docker file templates ready to use for development. Rust, JavaScript, Python, you name it. And again, you can check the content of those templates on GitHub, I'll put the link in the description. So let's pick Python with a random version that I for sure don't have on my operating system. Pick some additional things like Git, wait for it, and boom, you're ready to go. Let's quickly double check by open a simple Python shell. And as you can see, this is the right Python version 3.7 that I selected when I choose my template. As you can see now, I'm running inside the container, little proof, I'm running on Debian, and as a reminder, uh, my host machine is on macOS M1. All right, let's close this project and come back a week later and open it on another computer. I'm just kidding, I'm not here to waste your time, I'm here to help you save you time. So let's just play the game and reopen it now and let's see. Oh, what is this? Let's click on this one and make it ready in one click. I promise. And that's it, the development setup is ready again. Side note, it was super fast because the image was already built. So it just restarted the container. So let's go understand what happens. When we picked our template to the command palette, it actually created two files. One, it's a Docker file, and the other is a dev container .json. The Docker file, you guess it, basically it's the image definition of your container. Again, the base image is coming from the Microsoft repo template, but of course you can start from scratch and build your own one. The second part, the dev container .json file, is a metadata file that will tell VS Code all the context you need to have the development set up ready with that Docker file. There are tons of parameters that you can play with, and I will put the official documentation of dev container in the description, but here I'm going just to cover the most useful one that I'm using. So here you go. Names is basically the name that will be displayed on the bottom corner. Either you have a Docker file which is sitting in your repo, or you can reference for a container image that exists on a remote container registry. I like to have the Docker file in my code base so that I can change it and adapt it quickly. Settings. This is mostly for VS Code to recognize where the Python kernel is, which Python testing framework you are using, and so on. Next, we have the extension. You can pick to have pre-installed extension ready and note that it is the extension ID, which might not be so obvious to find it. But if you go to the extension store, you can have an option add to the dev containers and it will directly add the extension ID in your dev container .json. Finally, we have the post create commands. Uh, usually I use it to install the dependency because I'm not putting it in my Docker file to keep it light. So typically here in our example is just doing a poetry install. For what ports, if you are working with an API or a web app, you can forward port 
to be able to use the web browser and interact with your service. And the mount is basically uh, mounting the volume from a container to your host machine. And usually I mount the SSH key for any GitHub action and also cloud credential uh, for cloud providers. So typically a .aws folder or a .config slash ECP. One more advanced feature I'm using often, and again, there is a template for that in the Microsoft repo, is Docker from Docker. So sometimes you need to run Docker in the Docker. A classic example is that you want to build a Docker image for a Kubernetes application or an AWS Lambda. So you need to be able to do a Docker build inside your container. This is totally possible. And basically you are using the Docker engine from your host machine and just installing some CLI tools and you can run Docker build within your Docker. All right, one more magic thing I want to show you. So GitHub CodeSpace, if you haven't heard, it's basically VS Code on the web and it was GA in August, 2021. And what's the magic is that the same dev container.json can be used for a kit dot code space environment. So let's take, for example, my personal website. This one is open source. And we go to the repo and you can see that I can open this one with GitHub CodeSpace. And of course, I could open this project locally as we just did with the Python project. But just for the sake of the demo, let's open GitHub CodeSpace. Boom, it's ready to go and I have a no JavaScript development environment ready for my website. This is pretty handy if you want to do pair programming or you're working on a light laptop. And to be honest, the pricing is pretty fair. GitHub will automatically shut down your instance if you're not using it and you will not pay for it. So unless you're really a hardcore programmer that codes eight hours a day, it's fairly affordable. All right, let's come back to the reality and address some limitation. So I've been using the setup for more than a year for all my data work related, which means analytics, data pipeline, API, CLI development, and also web app development for side project. The only limitation I could see is if you're doing mobile development. And the simple reason is that if you do so, you need to install a bunch of eliminators and those doesn't run well on a container or can they? And that's at least the only imitation I've seen for my work. If you have any, please let me know in the comment. I'll be curious to know. Two other major points that's been really useful for me. If you need to do any major update on a specific framework, let's say Terraform, it's really easy to test it out because you just change a variable on your Docker file and you're ready to try it out. No need to look how to install multiple versions of this or that on your host machine, you have the perfect isolation in the container. Another thing great is that you can reuse the same image for your CI pipeline, which makes this one and the dev environment as close as possible. And that will help you a ton and make the debugging way easier when your CI is failing. That's it, hope you enjoy and please make your development environment reproducible. Think about your new teammate or just your future self that would have forgotten everything a few months later. Think about them, please. Thanks again for watching. Don't hesitate to smash the like button. It's free and it helps a ton the channel. And if you like reading content, don't hesitate to follow me on LinkedIn or Medium. And may the dev container be with you.